Hi, this is Michelle with Simply Scafe Handmade, and today we're going to take a look at crosshatch quilting. One of the most basic designs for hand quilting a quilt, whether it's a small quilt or a large quilt, is a design called the crosshatch. Basically what you're doing is making straight lines that start at the one corner of the quilt and work their way all the way to the other side. And then they crisscross diagonally. You can see on this quilt where I've started quilting in one direction diagonally. And then over here I started kind of working the opposite direction. This will create a honeycomb type design on your quilt. And when you're finished, it'll puff up with little squares. A lot of times if you look at a really old fashioned quilt, you'll see the crosshatch design. It's quick it's easy and it's a great way to just all over quilt something in a functional manner that will stand up to use and washing better than some of the more detailed designs. Now when I mark a crosshatch quilt I sit down with a ruler and I like to do my crosshatch about two inches apart. So I lay down my ruler this is a two inch quilting ruler and I simply trace one side and then the other. And then I flip my ruler over and trace it again. And I keep going until I've worked my way one direction across. I simply go the other direction with my ruler, tracing again here and here. Flip, trace, flip, and trace. When I finished, I have a basic design that really looks like lines crossing each other. Whether my quilt is small or large, I have to decide whether I'm going to use a hoop like this or put it in a large frame. If I'm working in a hoop like this, I can start quilting wherever my hoop is and I can work just in whatever direction is easiest. As you can see from this example, I started right about here and I quilted my way in one direction, I quilted across and down and started quilting the other way. And I've just kind of worked my lines that way. If I were quilting this on a large quilt frame, I would sit at my frame and I would quilt all of my lines going in one direction. Then I would walk around and sit on the opposite side and work the quilting in the other direction. Because when I quilt, I want to try as much as possible to keep a good posture and a comfortable quilting position and not put my body in strange wonky positions for very long periods of time because that causes pain and discomfort and it makes quilting hard and not fun. When I sit down to quilt, I want my quilt at a comfortable position. I want to have my tools right next to me, a pair of scissors, the thread that I'm using, my trusty thimble, my needle. When I work, I don't want to be where my feet don't touch the floor or where my work isn't close enough for me to see well and to have my arms supported. We don't want to put any strain on our back, our shoulders, or our neck. Once again, when I quilt in the crosshatch design or any design, I want to be careful to be using that rock and hill method where basically I'm putting the needle down into the thread and I'm holding it with my thimble. My finger underneath pushes that fabric up at the same time that my needle lays and rocks backwards. I make a hill with my thumb in the front and I shove that needle forward and pull it through just like that. I can put as many stitches as I'm comfortable with when I'm working in that way. If my stitching is, if I'm new to this and I'm uncomfortable making too many stitches at one time, it's okay to quilt one stitch at a time until you get used to that rocking and hill motion where basically the underneath finger, you're pushing that needle down and that bottom finger is pushing up at the same time. You're rocking that needle back. 
This thumb comes forward and presses the fabric down while the thimble pushes the needle through the fabric. Once you get comfortable with that particular, you know, where your fingers are moving, then it's completely okay to put two or three stitches on before the needle pushes all the way through the fabric. The key is get comfortable with the motion and get very comfortable with consistent stitches. Some people like their stitches far apart and some people want their stitches very close together and I think it's a matter of preference. If you want to have very tight, tight stitches, then the key is work one at a time until you feel like you've reached the tension level you're comfortable with. If you're okay with wider stitches, that's fine. Just make sure that you aim for consistency. If your thread is close in color to the fabric you're working with, then inconsistency of stitches will not stand out as much as it will if, for example, like this one, my fabric is white and my thread is red so that you can see it on the video. But it would be easy to tell if I had a lot of unevenness in the length and depth of my stitches. So the point is, get comfortable. I also want to make you note that as I lay out my stitch, uh, my tools beside me, one thing that I do not keep beside me when I'm quilting is a seam ripper. And that's because I want to be comfortable with the stitches I'm making. I don't want to continually second guess myself. But to make the stitches and go back and look at it, if my seam ripper is close at hand, I'm too tempted to rip out everything that I question whether it looks right or not. The key is to work, not to rip. So, as we work the crosshatch, while I'm working here in this particular little small hoop setting, this is just a sampler, so it's not a large quilt and it's easy to manipulate and move this around. I don't want to break thread unless I have to. So I start in one place, I work, and I follow the line as often as I can so that I don't have to break the thread, which in this position means I may move it around and stitch this way some and move it and stitch and then I can move it again and stitch some more. And that works really well in a hoop like this. If this were a larger project or if I were on a frame, again, I would stitch straight down. And oftentimes that means that I'm going to cut that thread at the end. I will work as far as I can reach and I will tie a knot and cut that thread. And then I will start again here and work my way down and tie it off and cut that thread. And that's simply to keep my tension even, to keep me working in a position that's comfortable for my body. And I will work all the way across a large project before I go around and sit on the opposite side and work the other direction. If you have any questions or comments, fee please feel free to shoot me an email at simplyscaife at yahoo.com or leave a message below in the comment box. We love hearing from you and we are here to help.